Ballers, ballers, what's going on? It's Preacher, and we're in the siege of the Nijiao. Nijiao, Nijiao. I'm not big on my Chinese stuff, I've got to say. I am not that big on it, but this is another heroic from Mr. Pandaria. We're going to be checking it out today. I am, of course, tonking on my prop warrior. Uh, heavy thump, everything's going to be cool. This dungeon, again, very different. This is the Mantid dungeon, which is like the insectoid creatures. Very creepy crawlies running around you, and you actually start inside a tree. It's a very nice environment. I actually quite like it. A um, few things with the trash before we get too far on it. I skip loads of trash in this video for the very, very simple reason is the trash is pretty much all exactly the same mob. These three packs, that, uh, this three mob pack that you start the dungeon with right at the entrance essentially is repeated throughout the entire dungeon. Uh, there's very little variety in the mobs at all. And the mobs really only have one main ability, which is to put up a shield, as you saw there, that big yellow honeycomb. Uh, and that is going to protect them from 90% damage taken. All you do is you just go ahead and move them out of it. No big deal at all. We've seen that stuff in all the while before. They had engineers that did the same thing. We also have these globs, these gooey oozes. But there's only three packs of these. We don't really see them repeated. I will say the environment is pretty cool. We're inside a tree. That means there's all sorts of sap and goo and stickiness going on. If most of the dungeon does revolve around something sticky on the floor slowing you down. This first boss, as you can meet here, is immediately after the first two trash packs. That one, three mobs of mantids and those globules, and then you'll instantly hit this boss. This boss needs a little bit of work. Essentially, what will happen is you've got a big pool of sticky sap in the middle, and then periodically he will summon these three globules that are going to start crawling towards that pool. And when they reach there, they actually make the pool bigger and make it more powerful. You see that globule was absorbed there. Then he'll go, to go ahead and detonate that pool. It said shrink the pool, so I ran into it just to check it out, but unfortunately it did no damage to me whatsoever. Uh, this is one of those bosses, again, as we've seen in Mr. Pandaria, there's not much chance of you dying on this fight. There just isn't. There is very, very little chance of you being able to die on this fight. Uh, what I'd like to see is the detonate taking much, much more health off people. I would love to see that happen. And also the globules need more health. As you'll see on this next one after I realise, I remember this is my first time in it, is I instantly go for the globules... And you can kill them in essentially two hits as a tank. Uh, they take very, very little damage to die whatsoever. In fact, I just go ahead and the Shaman helps me on the last one. But I solo them down. And anybody who's got some sort of attention to what the hell is going on around you is not going to struggle with this whatsoever. It's so easy. Uh, and the detonate doesn't do hardly any damage, as you can see there. Very little things to worry about. So this is your first boss. Needs work. There's no threat of you dying whatsoever. The globules need more health. The DPS are never going to learn. Unfortunately, you're going to have one person who probably knows that you should kill those. He's going to kill them for you. And the other DPSs will be none the wiser that they should have done anything whatsoever. We want to be punished if we do not do the fight correctly. We want to be punished in some way. Risk of death is good. But luckily, look at this. Moving from the claustrophobic environment from the trees, inside that tree, we actually come to big open outdoor areas. Very similar to the Hyjal raid, in fact. You see the bosses sort of roam around and stand in the distance like Archimon did. And then you've got to come up against this boss. He's only a bit of trash before this. And then you go into him. This is the general. Now, this boss does have a way of actually killing you. Way! He has a possibility of you being killed. We like that. And it's this whirlwind ability here. You can see it right there. He's going to stand and he's going to do sort of like a bone storm. This boss very much takes the mechanics from Lord Morogar from Ice Crown Citadel. He's going to charge somebody and then he's going to do his bone storm ability. Now, this whirlwind ability does in fact tick for around about 60k on a tank every second, let alone clothies or even low armor wearers. As a tank, I was taking around 60k ticks. He's going to hurt if you do not move from that whirlwind very, very quickly. He does very much hurt. You can see there, he charges off into the distance. He starts doing his whirlwind. Everybody get the hell out of the way, and then you'll be more than fine. Other than that, he just melees you. He does no other big things. His melee hits are quite hard, but they're very slow. You can actually see the animation of how slow this guy hits. Little bits of cooldowns when he does his whirlwind. You can see that Hunter did not notice that giant whirlwinding mob right in his face. You would think you would notice from the fact that he had no range. Sorry for picking on that Hunter, but he was in complete troll through the entire dungeon. Very elitist and very bad. Very, very bad. Caused several wipes with his badness. Never mind. That's all that is for that boss. But this boss does drop an incredible amount of loot weird amount of loot like five items so whether this makes up for the sort of length of this dungeon is unsure but he does drop it currently on beta about five items we got five um, and they're good items too a nice bit it's almost like he drops his entire loot table so he's probably just slightly bugged 
instead of dropping a couple of items or one we did get our screen spammed with items i thought it was four you'll see here four items there and in fact after we got rid of one we actually got another item as well very interesting Moving further into the dungeon, again, I've skipped a lot of trash. You're in a big outdoor army staging area. That's what the hell is supposed to be going on here. And you come into this big, huge open environment again, where we've got a boss waiting for us at the end. I did show this trash pack just to prove I was not lying, and this trash is, in fact, the same trash all the damn time through this dungeon. Uh, this trash does hurt, though, especially when they're in packs of four. This is one of the points where the hunters complained. He, he was complaining that I was pulling too little with one pack at a time. Decided to go ahead and misdirect a second pack to us and did in fact wipe the group. The pack eight threw me even with shield wall on. Uh, so you've got to keep your eyes open for this one. Do one pack at a time. It is a slow, long haul. There is a lot of trash in this dungeon. Uh, more related towards the quest. This will be a little bit like Lost City the Tall Veer, where you can skip tons of trash. But if people want the quest, you're going to be doing a lot of trash. We wanted to do the quest to get some rewards. We ended up clearing most of the instance. And you do need to clear most of the instance to complete the quests. You have to free various pandas in cages. Uh, there's 12 of them you need to free. And about 15 total in the zone. Which means you have to clear all the outdoor areas to reach them. You can use your mounts. But essentially there's trash every few feet. You're not going to be doing that. Unless you're doing a run back because you died to a boss that you shouldn't have died to. This is the general. As you can see, he's using some sort of insectoid leg as his sword. Uh, again, another boss you can't die to. You just cannot die to this boss. You'd have to do something insane to die to this boss. You'd have to be crazy. Don't worry about those threat issues. That's the hunter decided to put Growl on his pet. Whatever, dude. Uh, he thought it'd be funny to start aggro uh, giving me grief. Uh, essentially, what's going to happen is he's going to throw his insectoid limb at somebody. You're going to see a little warning circle to say, Hey, I'm throwing this thing at you. You better get out of the way. But, and then he's going to charge you and attack you. Now, unfortunately, that does no damage whatsoever. It could be a bug on beta. That would be fine if it was. Uh, but, unfortunately, it does no damage at all. No one in this group, I don't think, actually moved from the ability. But nobody took any damage either. His other ability is putting up that shield, as we've seen so many times on the trash in this dungeon. He puts up his 90% damage reduction shield. And they're going to spawn some very a large amount of non-elite mobs. They don't do any damage and they have no health. Much like the Stone Core, but the Stone Core last boss where he summons all of those ads. And you've got to tank and pick them up and just kill them. No threat at all. No threat. They're not going to kill you. They're not going to do any damage to you. And if you want to tank them, you just get in the melee, grab them all. And if you miss any, just give them a taunt. No big deal whatsoever. He's not going to struggle to you. His final third ability is called Tempest. Tempest is a large AoE. He's going to fire off across everybody in the party. And what Tempest does is it absorbs healing on you. So if you're the tank, you need to clear this debuff very, very quickly. It can be dispelled. Uh, currently on beta it can be dispelled what you could actually do is if you have a self heal on your tank dks are going to have absolutely no trouble with this ability whatsoever uh, i didn't either with victory rush as soon as he casted tempest i was able to victory rush myself and just go ahead and clear the debuff by myself i didn't need any help whatsoever it can be risky there you can go you can see him casting tempest fire off a victory rush and you're in no big deal whatsoever you're absolutely safe it is literally the only ability that could cause a death if you were low. For whatever reason, the healer hadn't been keeping you topped up. And you get Tempest cast on you and he catches you with a big melee hit. He is using a two-hander. You can see his swing speed is extremely slow again. Nothing scary about him. Uh, you can get caught with that, but you should have a cooldown ready anyway. And he just rinse and repeats these same phases. You're going to get two or three of the hardened shell phases where you pick up the adds. I think we got two. And that's it. That's the end of that boss. He does no special abilities. Again, you cannot really die on that fight. I wanted to show this little bit of trash here on this bridge. We have to take a bridge to the final boss, the last boss, the Insectoid Lord. Um, and you can see all the honeycombs on the bridge and all that kind of stuff going on. This trash is very annoying. They have an ability called Throw Brick, where they will hide and throw bricks at you. And they will continue to do that until somebody's in melee range. Unfortunately, on the bridge, a lot of trash is packed close together. Uh, again, the impatient hunter decided he wanted to kill some things in the distance. Throw Brick does, in fact, hurt if it is not on the tank. Uh, he attacked mobs I couldn't possibly get to because, quite frankly, I would have chain pulled the rest of the dungeon or half the bridge, uh, and, he st and he died very, very quickly. That's, again, just, uh, just don't do it. Let the tank pull and clear the bridge in a nice, slow, methodical process. Very cool and easy. The last boss is this Lord at the back, the controller of the Insectoids. He has two abilities. Again, he has Throw Brick. Again, he's a complete copy of the Trash, similar to the last boss. Essentially, what he's going to do is stand on the edge of the bridge, and you cannot move him. You can't move him at all. He's stationary. And if he's in melee range of somebody, he will, in fact, just melee them. But if he has not got somebody in melee range, he will throw bricks. Now, the throw brick ability on the boss, it seems to be weaker than the one on the actual Trash, which is kind of weird. 
what he will do is take off and fly to the other end of the bridge and start flapping his wings to slow you down getting back to him. And you're supposed to use these honeycombs in order to stop your progress from being thrown back. Similar to like being on an escalator that's going backwards. As soon as somebody's in melee range, he will stop doing it and you can get all the way back. You can think of some creative ways of getting back there very quickly. Get a priest to life grip you instantly. Start charging and heroic leap through there. Heroic leap is currently a little bit ropey on the bridge. It does get some pathing issues. And you can also see these yellow sapling pools being dropped on the bridge. They slow you down. So you do have the risk of being blown in the wind and getting slowed if you walk through those. I walked through one in a second just to see if it did any damage. Was it DPSing people? No, didn't. Just slows you down. Little bit of a bug here on beta is the wind can blow you into the honeycombs, which he's supposed to do is they're a wall. But unfortunately, it gets you stuck. As you can see, my character is completely stuck. Nothing I could do to get out of these honeycombs. Luckily, I had access to Heroic Leap and was able to leap to freedom. That worked. But the honeycombs do, in fact, get you stuck completely when they blow you into it, unless you're careful. There's some bugged spots in those honeycombs. That's going to leave you in a pretty bad, tight situation if you're the tank, because you cannot get out of there, especially if you're not a tank with something like Heroic Leap or some sort of movement speed. You cannot get out. This face is going to repeat. He does no other abilities whatsoever. He has no other abilities other than flying backwards and forwards and then doing some big damage to you. I recommend you try and bloodlust and kill him as soon as humanly possible as the fight is very, very boring, unfortunately. <laughs> there's just no other abilities. There's no risk of death. You can see there's no damage going on anywhere. It's very, very minor. All his ability is is throw bricks when he's at range. And other than that, that is no good. So that is going to be the Siege of the Nijuar Temple. I rate that one a probably... 4 out of 10 again, unfortunately. A 4 out of 10. Uh, it needs a lot of work. Hopefully we can revisit this when the bosses have been changed. If they are going to be changed, we would like to see that changed. Uh, it don't, it's all the bosses you cannot die to. And if you die to the will winning boss, well, you should have noticed that beforehand. Other than that, no, 4 out of 10 for this dungeon. Sorry, Blizz. A little bit more work needed.